those people who sang Swing Low Seat Sweet Chariot or whatever you added into that song. Do you remember the people that are called slaves? Um, we are going to be thinking about what happened to them. Did they just stay stuck? Well, lots of them I'm afraid did because their owners didn't even allow them to learn to read or write. And so they wanted to keep them there because if they'd learned to read and write, they might have realised and understood a little bit more about how they could escape. So imagine what it must have felt like. Um, and if you remember, they sang songs to help them feel a little bit, I don't know, just to be able to get through. Well, today, the song we're going to be, two songs, but the first song we're gonna be looking at is the one you heard right at the beginning. But this song, although they used it just to sing and keep them going when they were working, has another meaning. It has a secret code in it. Pretty clever. Because a lot of these slaves ended up escaping. They didn't, couldn't read a map, they couldn't understand anything, but they sang songs to tell each other the way to escape. And this song has a secret code in the words. Can you guess what that code is? Let's look at the first verse, okay? I'm gonna listen, uh, sing a little bit to you and then you're gonna sing it back, okay? So it goes. about who they were, where they were. Okay, let's sing it together. Off you go, join in please. A one, two, three, four. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. And then the next bit goes. For the old man's are waiting to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd. So there, for the old man's are waiting to carry you to freedom. Let's try that one, two, three. For the old man's are waiting to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking cord. Should we try the whole thing? Let's join in. Follow the drinking cord. Follow the drinking cord. For the old man's are waiting to carry you to freedom. ideas whatsoever. Well actually the drinking gourd is uh, the, uh, the name they use to describe a pattern in the stars. The pattern, the constellation that we know as the plough. Do any of you ever look at the stars? Maybe some of you know loads more than me about all the different shapes you can see. But if you have a chance ever to lie in the dark outside and look at the stars on a night when there's no clouds, you will see a shape that's called, or we call in our country, in England, the plough, okay? Um, in the 1800s, the Americans called it the drinking gourd. Can you think why? Well, a drinking gourd to them was like a spoon, I'll show you a picture, um, like a ladle and a wooden thing they carved out and they used it to scoop up water and have a drink like a cup with a big handle so they're saying follow the drinking gourd not follow the spoon that dips into water but look up and they're saying to the slaves in order to escape you've got to follow that star can you think of any other stories that you know where people followed a star yeah the Christmas story 
the wise men, didn't they? They followed the star to where, um, where Jesus was laying. And this is what this song says. We're going to watch a little clip to explain a little bit more about that shape in the star. So if you ever get a chance to look up, you can see it. Have a little listen to this clip. The plough, or the great bear, or to give it its full Latin name, Ursa Major. If you look toward the northern sky, you will be able to discern, even through city lights, seven relatively bright stars, which to me look like a large question mark. But the ancients, when they linked them together, it reminded them of a plough. Not only is this one of the largest and most famous of the constellations, it's also an extremely useful constellation because it helps us locate other areas in the sky. For instance, if you line up the two furthest stars on the right and in your mind link them by a line, continue the line up till you hit another bright star. Now this bright star is part of another constellation called Ursa Minor or the Little Bear. Now this constellation is difficult to see, it's not particularly important, but the star that you hit is because this is the North Star. And the North Star is the star which is always in the same place every night, any time of the night. Do you see? Right, so the slaves were being told, or singing about and telling each other that if they wanted to escape, they needed to look up to the stars and follow that shape in the sky, because that would help them to get to the right place where they would be free. The next verse tells them when they should go. So it goes, when the sun comes back and the first quail calls. Let's do it again. Join in this time. One, two, three. When the sun comes back and the first quail calls. So what do you think when the sun comes back means? I think it's about this time of year. So when um, it's more like springtime, um, that is the time to go. Otherwise it'd be so cold because they had to travel so they wouldn't be seen. So um, when the sun comes back, sing it. Let's sing, see if we can sing the whole thing. Follow the drinking gourd. One, two, three. <gasps> Follow. is a kind of crazy bird um not crazy bird it's just a bird a bit like a pheasant probably um and um at, there was a certain time of year which was around about april when they all started appearing i suppose um right so that is what our song means so as well as a song it's also a secret code now we're going to watch a video now that tells you all about one particular woman called harriet tubman and she was amazing. And she followed the drinking gourd and escaped. But that is not where her story ends. Have a little listen and see what she did. Harry Tubman's owner died in 1849. When his widow planned to sell off her enslaved human beings, Harriet feared she would be sold away from everyone she loved. She had heard of an underground railroad, a secret network of safe houses, boat captains, and wagon drivers willing to harbor fugitive enslaved people on their way north. So Tubman fled with two of her brothers, Ben and Harry. They eventually turned back, fearing they were lost. But in one of her sleeping spells, Harriet dreamed that she could fly like a bird. Looking down below, she saw the path to liberation. And in the autumn of 1849, she set out on her own, following the North Star to Pennsylvania and to freedom. Tubman returned to the South 13 times to free her niece, brothers, parents, and many others. She earned the nickname Black Moses and worked diligently with fellow abolitionists to help enslaved people escape. So Harriet Tubman went in the dead of night 
and escaped. Now how, imagine how scary that would have been, all by yourself, or she went with her brothers, didn't she? And knowing that if somebody got caught or they found out that you had escaped, they'd send, now they would send their dogs. So the owners sent their dogs to sniff you out. And that's why Harriet Tubman and probably other people, you had to go into the water and follow along that way in order to avoid dogs coming to get you. And imagine what would happen if you were caught. It was a very, very brave thing to do. But Harriet Tubman was amazing, wasn't she? Because she went back and helped loads of other people um, to escape um, from being slaves. They're called the abolitionists. Anyway, our next video is we're talking about another song. Another song, there were loads of them, that the slaves used to tell each other how best to escape. This song has also got a secret code. Now, uh, for a bit of introduction to this song, I don't know how many of you have seen um, Prince of Bel-Air, the old um, television show. Here's a little clip um, that might make you laugh, but also hopefully will introduce you to the next song we're going to be looking at. It's called wade in the water. Hmm, I wonder what they were trying to tell the slaves. Have a listen. Well, here's one called wade in the water. Now this song told the runaway slaves that the best escape route was along the river. Now late at night, these songs could be heard coming from the slave cabins along the route, guiding the runaways to freedom. Wade in the water, wade in the water. Children wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Everybody join in now. Wait in the water. Come on now. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Everybody join in now. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Backstroke, I said, wait. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, there we have our new song, Wade in the Water. And it's, as you can tell, it's all about telling the slaves it's really important when you're going at dead at night to get into the water if you hear dogs coming or at all because you're sent won't be smelt by the dogs. So they had to, they didn't have any wellies or anything like that. They had no shoes, these people. And they were just, they had no map, they didn't know where they were going, but there was this amazing load of people helping them. And it's, they were called the Underground Railroad. And it wasn't actually a railway train or a track, but it was a series, did you see at the beginning of this, the video about Harriet Tubman, a series of people who were helping the slaves. So they, if they could get to the next place, like the next house they could sleep in the day and hide and then at night time they'd come out and go a bit further along their journey and then there might be somebody with a boat who could help them get a little bit further and then they'd hide away and sleep in the day and then when the night fell they could go a bit further and there was a good idea to wade in the water because otherwise they might their scent might be found by the dogs so we're going to learn how to sing wade in the water but rather than me teaching it to you um, there's a lady who um, is going to sing it to you and you can sing along with her and her daughter. It'll all make sense when you see it. Have fun. Go for it. The song and the words of the chorus are like this. Wade in the water. Wade in the water, children. Wade in the water. God's going to trouble the water. And that's it. So let's get going. The first line goes like this. Wade. In the water, you sing. Wade in the water. Second line goes like this. Wade in the water, children. Wade in the water, children. The next part is similar to the beginning. It goes, Wade in the water you try wade in the water the last line is nice and easy it goes god's gonna trouble the water 
God's gonna trouble the water. Well done. <laughs> and now we're gonna sing the whole chorus together. Way in the water. Way in the water, children. Way in the water. God's gonna trouble. The water. There is a rhythm line which goes like this. You'll hear my choir sing it later on, but I'm gonna sing it together with Jada. Here goes. Boom, 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 in the water. Boom, 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 in the water. Boom, 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 boom. God's gonna trouble the water. I hope you were really singing along. That's a great song. Um, the great thing about these two songs when we get back into school is that they both can go together. So you can sing one song at the same time. You can sing Wade in the Water at the same time as Follow the Drinking Cord and they sound so cool when they're put together. All these songs, or lots of these songs, are called spirituals because as well as... Um, making the slaves feel better and also giving them a secret code to where, how to escape. They were also, lots of them, um, quite spiritual. So they were talking about God. And so they were named spirituals. Um, we are going to hear now, I've got a few more clips of different people playing Wade in the Water. So um, just enjoy, as always, sing along. Maybe you could, it's quite interesting to see how some people change the words. So as the song gets, um, there's a black and white uh, film where some guys doing the most amazing dancing. It's quite not very good quality because it's from the 1960s, so it's quite old. Um, but if you listen to the words, the lady singing to the song, she's changed it completely. So now it's not really about escaping slavery. It's turned into kind of a, a completely different song. But that's the clever thing about music. So have a listen. There's uh, just yeah, just a few clips of different versions of Wade in the Water. Sing along if you like.
lesson and hopefully the end of me having to talk to you from my house. Uh, I really look forward to seeing you all. Thank you very much for those people who sent in any pictures or videos of them doing stuff to do with music. Uh, fab and amazing. You are very clever. Um, so when I see you again, don't forget anything we've just talked about because we'll be recapping and moving on with all these cool ideas. Just to finish, um, if you want to, there's a little short film that tells a story a little bit of what we've just been learning about, about Harriet Tubman, about the slaves who managed to escape. Um, and in this story, there's a song going and you can hear, if you really listen carefully, Wade in the Water playing at the, or being sung at the same time as um, the uh, Drinking Gourd song quite cool to hear them both together. Let's try it when we're all back in school. All right, I hope you enjoyed uh, that lesson today and have a little look at this last clip. Bye. <laughs>